Hi, this is Karen White of Divine Time Astrology. I've been a professional astrologer in Southern California for the past seven years. I love Jaimini astrology because it's the most reliable technique I've ever found to show career, purpose, talents, and skills. And I'm using Jaimini astrology here to show you how you can see if you could be a writer. Not just a fiction, but nonfiction too, including articles and technical writing. This is not the only way to see writing in the chart. There are yogas for writing, but I'm concentrating on the Jaimini way of seeing it because Jaimini is a very concrete technique showing what can actually be in your life. And that's because it's sign based. So tonight's author is another one of my very favorite authors. And his name is John D. MacDonald. He was an American writer of novels and short stories, but mostly known for his thrillers. He was a prolific writer of crime and suspense novels, many of them set in Florida. Now, his best known works include the popular and critically acclaimed Travis McGee series and his novel, The Executioners, which was filmed as Cape Fear, made into a movie and remade in 1991. So he was named a Grand Master of the Mystery Writers of America, and he won a 1980 National Book Award in the one-year category mystery. And Stephen King praised him as the great entertainer of our age and a mesmerizing storyteller. Well, I love his Travis McGee novels. Now, Travis McGee is a, um, a private investigator. He lives on a boat in Florida. He's intelligent and introspective, a little on the cynical side. But at the same time, he's very noble. And he often does things for people that he really doesn't get paid much for. But he does get paid. And he gets paid well. He's a he calls himself a salvage consultant, and he made his living basically by recovering uh, loot from thefts and swindles, which is interesting because the author uh, John he uh, actually had an MBA, and a lot of what he learned in business was the basis of what he wrote about in the Travis McGee novels. So let's see how this shows up in his chart. So we see here his Atmakaraka is Mercury, and here it is. Now what we need, of course, well, Mercury is the planet for writing, and we need to have the moon in a, a Mercury, Jupiter, or Venus sign, or with Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, or aspected by Mercury, Jupiter, or Venus. And what we see here is that Mercury is ruled by the moon because it's in the sign of Cancer. And the moon is ruled by Mercury because it's in the sign of Gemini. So we have this mutual reception here going on. And then we also need to see the third house lord involved because that's the house for writing. And that is Aries, so ruled by Mars. Mars is in Libra, so it's ruled by Venus. And here is Venus with his Atmakaraka Mercury. Then we need the fifth house, Lord for creativity. Well, this is the fifth house, it's Gemini, and that is Mercury. And then we need the ninth house, Lord, involved for telling tales and teaching. Well, that is Libra, and therefore ruled by Venus as well. Now, what was interesting about all the financial swindles that he wrote about and um, him having an MBA is that in the Jaimini astrology, Mercury rules business. And here we see this, this is at Makarika, Mercury. The noble character of Travis McGee can also be seen here in uh, John's chart because of his son. The son is in Leo and the son is aspecting the third house of writing because remember in the Jaimini technique, the fixed signs aspect the movable or cardinal signs and vice versa. And the sun here is aspecting the third house of writing and the ninth house of 
teaching and telling tales. Well, the sun is the most noble planet. And here in another technique called Shad Shadbala, which has to do with directional strength, based on where the planets are placed in the chart, we see here the sun graph is by far the strongest planet for John. Now, if you notice, all of his travel, uh, Travis McGee novels have a color in their name, like the deep blue goodbye, the lonely silver rain. In fact, it, it started with a deep blue goodbye and ended with the lonely silver rain. There's 21 of these novels. I've read every single one of them. And having a color for the title of each one was suggested by his publisher. So that when people were in airports and looking for something to read, they would easily be able to see if there's a novel of John McDonald's that they haven't read yet. Now we see here also in the Navamsha, his Amakaraka Mercury is in the sign of Pisces and it's aspected by the moon. So here's a moon Mercury emphasis again. Now it's with K2 and K2 is the planet of psychology and he was definitely a psychologist in his books. It's really interesting the way that he can really see into a person, especially a bad guy or a woman who turns out to be a bad guy. And of course, true to the genre, Travis McGee has many women come in and out of his life. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if mystery writers uh, do that simply so that that's the way that they can indulge their um, polygamous nature. I'm talking about men writers. But he was married to the same woman for I don't know how many years. He got married pretty young and then she survived him when he died at the age of 70. I'm assuming that she didn't mind his fictional um, ways of, uh, of experiencing other women. Okay, so this was tonight's author, John D. MacDonald. And if you like mysteries uh, and you like them written in the first person and you like where there's a lot of travel and different kinds of situations where you can follow him, uh, conducting an investigation, then I recommend these books. They're timeless, even though they were written a while back. They have no cell phones, there's no computers or anything like that yet, but nevertheless they're timeless in the, in the way that human nature doesn't change. So if you would like to get a Jaminee reading for yourself to find out what your talents, skills, purpose, career, abilities are, and if you could be a writer, just contact me at karen at divinetimeastrology.com and we can set something up. I love books and they've been lifelong friends and teachers to me and I don't think there could be too many writers in the world. Until next time, good night.